that's evident. Let go and let God, and I ain't been the same ever since. A whole lot's changed since I got my mind right. No looking back, my past is in hindsight. It's only I'm brand new. Fresh out the box, yeah, I'm brand new. Everything about me is brand new. Brand new. Hey, everybody. My name is Lena. This is my husband, Dale. We want to thank you for joining us today on Manifested Victory TV. Now, today we're going to continue on in our series, Kinds of Prayer. And today we're going to be talking about meditation. And now, meditation is like a vital part of seeing the promises of God come to pass in your life. In fact, uh, as we go on with this study, you'll find out that meditation is like the dynamite or the fuse to your faith. Amen. And so, and this is a very powerful tool. It's a very powerful part of prayer and, you know, having a relationship with God. But I would say meditation is probably one of the most overlooked areas when it comes to prayer and relationship with God. But hopefully through this study, you'll get an idea and you'll get to see how truly important meditation is and you'll make it a part of your daily, you know, routine and time that you spend with God if you don't already. So um, on that note, we're going to go ahead and get started for today. Dale, you want to say a prayer? Yeah, Father, we just thank you today first for breath. We thank you for all your finished works and provisions, healing that you've made available, financial abundance, deliverance. Father, we know everything's already done. Holy Spirit, we depend on you to lead and guide us. Uh, speak to our vocal cords, Holy Spirit. Give us the articulation to say what needs to be said in its simplest form so the people will get it. Open the hearts of everybody out there who see this video either now or on replay to receive. I decree that everybody out there is good ground to receive this word and that this word may germinate in their heart and become a part of their life. We thank you that this is already done in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, guys. So again, like I said, today we're going to be talking about meditation. And so uh, to begin, I wanted to start with the Psalms, uh, with a scripture, very familiar scripture in Psalms chapter one, verses one through three. And I'm going to read that here from the King James Version. It says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season his leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he does shall prosper amen so the reason I wanted to start with this verse here is because if you notice there uh, in chapter 2 it says that this man that is blessed that is blessed and that's like a tree planted by the rivers of living water you know that he prospers and all that he does it says that his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law does he meditate day and night now this word law we can exchange that with the word word you know so you could say his delight is in the word of the Lord and in his word does he meditate day and night amen and so that was just one scripture that's showing the importance of meditation now this is saying that we need to keep our focus on the word of God and that is something that we need to keep in front of us in our mind at all times this scripture is saying day or night and again that's just referencing the fact that this is something that we should do constantly continually and now i know a lot of people will say well hey lena i have to work i got kids i got stuff i got to do i can't just sit in the word all day and we're going to get to that but i just first wanted to read a couple of scriptures here to lay the foundation also i wanted to share isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 and i'm going to be reading this from the new king james it says you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you God will keep in perfect peace those whose mind is stayed on him. And the way that we keep our mind stayed upon the Lord is through meditating in his word day and night, like Psalms was bringing out there. Now, you know, in today's world, I can say oftentimes we can get so stressed, you know, by the things that maybe we hear on the news, you know, the things that you know we may hear at work you know the reports that we get from the doctor all these different things all these talking heads around us making all this noise right in our daily life in general a lot of these things if we just allow 
ourselves to take that in and to focus on that. It can cause us to get stressful. It can cause us to get in fear. It can cause all sorts of negative, you know, thoughts and emotions to start coming around. But what we need to be able to do is we want to always run whatever we hear through the filter of God's word. If we're focusing on the Lord and we're keeping his word in the forefront of our mind day and night, whenever anything comes our way, immediately that word is going to spring up on the inside of us and we're going to run it through the filter of that word, you know? And so that's one of the important things about meditating in the word day and night. It helps to keep that word of God at the forefront of your mind. It helps to keep you it for one it's a wonderful way to have a relationship with the father because you're always mindful of god you know that he's always there the holy spirit will always be speaking to you but again when you meditate on the word it keeps it in the forefront of your mind so when anything comes your way immediately it's like here's the voice of the world you know the news you know people at work you know whatever the case may be negative reports from the doctor all those things are coming your way but you've been meditating in that word you've kept it in the forefront of your mind day and night amen so when stuff comes it's like the word immediately pops up amen and so when those things are coming in at you the word is right here as a filter amen and those things have to flow through the filter of that word and when we do that we automatically begin to see god's viewpoint on whatever the situation is and that like isaiah was saying there that will help us to stay in perfect peace it says god will keep in perfect peace who those whose mind is stayed on him because we trust in him so when we know what the word says and the word says something about literally every situation everything that we face in life when we know what god's word says about it like i said when things come our way immediately the word is going to pop up in us you know we can focus on that instead of focusing on the negativity or whatever we see going on in the world and when we do that we're keeping our mind fixed on god fixed on the word and the word promises that that will allow us to continue to be in perfect peace and because we're trusting in god that will also help us to be able to trust in god and to rely on god more yeah yeah it's uh very overlooked you know meditation um it's just, let me give you a definition of it. It means to ponder, to think about. So meditation is your thinking. Meditation is a part of your soulish realm, your mind, your will, your, your thinker, your feeler, your chooser. Uh, to ponder, to roll over in your mind, um, to get rid of this one excuse. Everybody always say, well, I have to work. I got to work eight hours. I got 18 kids and all of this. I don't have time. Well, keep this in mind, the same way you worry and stress every day when you go to work, worried about how you're going to pay that light bill. You might be at work and, and working, doing your job, but every free moment you got, you thinking about who can I call to, to borrow the money to pay my light bill? Uh, what can I do to get this extra $50 for my phone bill? So you, you're already meditating in the word day and night. The matter, the, the the fact is, what are you meditating? You're meditating on? in the world's. Well, word. You, yeah, you you're already meditate. The word of God, right. you're meditating. Right, on you're the already negative. meditating day and night on something. So this thing about I don't have time. Well, you worry all day. The same way you worry and stress is the same way you meditate. Yeah, it's just gonna... the same thing. On it's just what are you meditating on? You know, mm -hmm. what are you thinking about? What are you mulling over in your mind? You know, so it's the same thing as worry and stress. It's just what are you meditating on? What are you thinking about mm -hmm. mulling over, pondering in your mind? Yeah, we're going to talk about that more as we get on into the study. You know, there's uh, there should be a difference between people who know the word of God, believers and the world, you know, and if we meditate on the word and we keep the word of God at the forefront of our mind and we're focusing on that day and night, then that is what's going to help us to differentiate ourselves from the people of the world. Because again, when problems begin to come our way, when we're hearing negative stuff on the news and things around us, we're immediately going to respond the way the word responds. We're not going to respond the way the world responds. You know, the world will respond and, you know, fear and doubt and unbelief and you know anger and all of these things but you know when we know what the word says and we trust in god then we can respond the way that the word 
says we should respond. We can respond with the word. And that in turn, again, is going to keep us in perfect peace and it's going to differentiate us from the world. You know, it's going to, because, you know, so many times I'll see Christians and you have a Christian here and a, and a person in the world and you can't tell any difference. They're just as sick as a person in the world. They're just as stressed. They're just, just as depressed. They're just as broke. So what's the point of being a Christian? There's no difference between this person that claims to be a believer and this person that's in the world. And it's not supposed to be that way. The word says that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're supposed to be separate. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. Amen. We're supposed to shine light into dark situations. And we're not going to be able to shine light in dark situations if we're you know, acting the same way the world acts. If we're responding the same way the world responds, amen. So meditating in the word will, again, like I said, help us to keep God's word in the forefront of our mind, amen, and allow us to be different from the world. Now, Psalms 1-3, it says that, uh, and he, it says that we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season and his leaf shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. So if we're focused on God and we're meditating in his word day and night, the word promises that we're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And so it doesn't matter, you know, in, in, in um, our study in front of the computer, I have a picture of a tree, you know, and it's, it's green and it's flourishing and it has green grass around it. But then on the outside, it's like a desert. It's just dry around. And that's what this uh, scripture is talking about here. It doesn't matter. It can be a drought situation going on around you. You know, COVID can be going on you know the economy can be going down the tank it doesn't matter we are like trees planted by the rivers of living water amen we're going to grow we're going to flourish we're going to prosper we're going to do well no matter what the situation is around us when we delight ourselves in the word of god and we meditate on it keep it in the forefront of our minds day and night you know, I can share an example, like even with COVID here, for example, you know, now I know a lot of people they've suffered through COVID, you know, COVID has hit a lot of people financially. They lost their jobs, you know, people haven't been able to pay their rent. You know, they had put a hold on evictions and stuff like that, but you had people that hadn't paid rent in like six months and stuff like that, you know, just think, just fearful whenever they, you know, remove this hold off of the rent that they're going to get evicted, you know, just all sorts of crazy things going on. But I can attest, you know, and this is just to God be the glory through COVID. I mean, we have prospered in the midst of COVID. We bought a house, amen. You know, while other people were getting evicted and not being able to pay their rent. And again, not saying that we're just wonderful, not saying anything about us bragging on God again to God be the glory. But it's because of this principle right here that we meditate on the word. We delight ourselves in the Lord. We keep the word of God and the promises of God in the forefront of our mind. So even in the midst of a pandemic, like I said, when people were getting evicted and getting put out and losing jobs, we were able to buy a home. Amen. In the midst of a pandemic, I can tell you, I have made more the last two years that COVID has been on the scene than I have previously, period, <laughs> ever, you know? I mean, so while people were struggling, again, the last two years of COVID has been one of the most prosperous times, you know, for mm -hmm. me, you know, and I'm sure Dale could, yeah. you know, he can say the same thing. Yeah. I mean, and it's because of this principle we're talking about. We stay meditating in the word. We focus on the word. We don't allow the outside distractions to dominate our thinking. And because of that, the blessings of God are not held up by what happens in the world. The blessings of God is not held up by by uh, what the government does. You know, the blessings of God are already finished, already done, ready to manifest for anybody who will focus on them, who will meditate on them, who will speak them. And, and nothing in this world system can stop it. It's up to you. And we're going to get into that a little later on, how uh, Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, it's, it's up to you. You know, it doesn't matter what goes on in the government, in the world. It does not stop what God has already finished from manifesting in your life. If you will meditate on the word day and night, focus on it, confess it, make it your main focus. Lena always liked to say what you are. Um, 
what you focus on the strongest, the longest, longest becomes, becomes the strongest. strongest. Yeah. So this meditation, another word, focus. Focusing on the word. That's what you give strength to, whatever you focus on. But it's your choice. It's your choice. You know, this works regardless of what's going on around you, all the distractions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to share another scripture with you here. It's Psalms 1-6. It says, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, this scripture here is talking about God protecting the righteous. God protects those who meditate in the word. The Lord watch, and uh, I got... Uh, this here from uh, Living Commentary, Andrew Womack's Living Commentary. It says, the Lord watches over the way of the righteous for good, but those who reject God will perish eternally. But this scripture here, the reason I wanted to share it, Psalms 1-6, it says, the Lord knows the way <clears throat> of the righteous. It's talking about God protecting the righteous. God will actually protect those. God will watch over the way of the righteous or over the way of those who, who meditate on his word, who, who delight themselves in him, who put, who keep him in the forefront of his mind. He will watch over our ways for good. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's a promise from the word. Then also we have Joshua 1, 8 here, another very familiar scripture talking about meditation. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Amen. Come it on, says, man. Listen, say, read it one more time, baby. Now, again, it's talking about the book of the right. law here. This was Joshua you know old testament all they had were the first five books of the bible back then you know genesis exodus leviticus numbers deuteronomy where they call it the um moral law no the septuagint the first five books of the bible but um this word where it says the book of the law Grace. we can just we can just say the word the book the the book of the word the word of god the bible but it's saying if we keep this bible it says this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success Okay, don't get that the book of the law tied up with the Old Testament. It's just talking about the word of God in general. And when we keep the word of God in the forefront of our minds, it says, and we don't allow it to depart from our mouths and we meditate in it day and night, then we will make our way prosperous. We will have good success. Yeah, you see that? For then you will make your way prosperous. Mm -hmm. So it ain't on you. I can't do it for her. I can't do it for you. It says, for then you will make your way prosperous. Excuse me for getting loud, but how simple can you get it? God is saying, okay, you have control over this. Mm -hmm. I don't have control to over this. To the extent this. that you're in yeah, the word, right. you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. That goes back to a video I just recently did, 30, 60, 100 fold that I'm going to be releasing. But to the extent that you're in the word, that determines your level of prosperity. That determines your level of success. Amen? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Look, y'all. Look, this is God has done everything already it's already finished you're not doing anything to get god to do nothing god ain't healing you no more it's already available he ain't prospering you no more it's already available his part is done your part is to act accordingly to cooperate with what's already done and it says meditating in the word day and night and observing to do according to all that's written in that for then you will make your way prosper. And like she just said, so you control the lever of the, the level of the manifestation of your prosperity in every area of your life. You control it. If you choose not to meditate in the world, in the word, then you're choosing not to prosper God's way to the fullest, to the degree that you choose not to do this. It's going to affect your life to the degree that you choose to do this. It's, you're going to prosper to the degree. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Now, if you notice here in this scripture, it says this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That word mouth, this is more than just reading it. This is speaking the word and application of the word day and night. The same that we just read in Psalms chapter one. So again, this is 
a total package. This is reading the word. This is meditating on the word, keeping the word in the forefront of your mind. This is speaking the word forth. And this is application of the word. Okay. So it's a total package. We're reading the word. We're meditating on the word. We're, we're speaking the word. We're applying the word. Amen. We're, this word is becoming a lifestyle for us. Amen. And again, this is the same thing that, uh, uh, that uh, Psalms chapter one was telling us about meditating in it day and night. You notice here in Joshua, it says meditating in it day and night, the same exact wording. Amen. It's something that we're to do always. We're to always be mindful of God because honestly for us, that's a covering like we read in Psalms. That's a protection that keeps us in perfect peace. And that allows the grace of God, the favor of God, the power of God to flow in our lives on our behalf. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, then the favor of God will not flow on your behalf. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I have here, everyone wants their way to be prosperous and they want to have good success. But the very thing the word says that we need to do in order to have this, most people don't want to do. They, you know, they, they don't want to take the time to get into the word, you know, and to read the word, to, to study the word, to meditate on the word. You know, they, you know, not anything against TV, nothing against TikTok or social media or any of those things. You know, I have a Facebook page. We have a YouTube channel, you know. You know, I watch TikTok videos occasionally, all those things, but you have to have it in its place. Mm -hmm. You can't allow your time spent doing things like that to outweigh the time you spend in the word or to take precedence over the word of God. You know, you've been sitting around watching movies all day and you haven't gotten in the word, you know nothing wrong with watching a movie, but you understand what I'm saying? You got to have balance. Amen. You, this says clearly day and night, you know, you can be watching a movie. I watch a movie all the time and I'm still thinking about the word of God. Mm -hmm. The word of God is all, once you get that word in you, then it just comes out of you. Yeah. It's got to be in you, you know, and that's, that's the whole thing in order. And that's another thing in order. And I think we may get into that a little bit later on here, but in order for you to be able to meditate on the word, you have to first have it in you. So there is a time, especially if you're new, if you're new to the word, there's a time where it's just about gathering knowledge. It's about gathering information. Amen. And so you want to just read the Bible just so you can know what the word of God says, you know, and if you're not a reader, that's not even a problem in today's world. You know, we have audio Bibles all over the place. You can go to YouTube and just Videos. type in. You know, All King James, uh, audio Bible, you can go to Bible gateway and, you know, you can type in, you no know, excuse. NIV Bible, you know, there's all sorts of ways that you can get access to an audio Bible for free. Like I said, on YouTube or Bible gateway or somewhere like that. And you can just listen to the word of God. You know, I have, um, CDs. I have, my mother had bought me a set of King James dramatized CDs for my birthday years ago. And so sometimes I'll pop a CD in on my way to and from work, or sometimes I'll just listen to a Bible reading, you know, from YouTube, you know, I'll just go to YouTube, type in, you know, King James, you know, dramatized Psalms. And I'll just listen to the book of Psalms, you know, in my ear while I'm at work or something like that. I mean, there's, no there's ways that you can get the word of God in you because here's the beautiful thing. Once you get that word in you, then the Holy Spirit will draw it out of you. And he draws it out of you when you least expect it. I mean, you can be doing the most mundane things, cleaning your house, <laughs> working in the garden, whatever. And the Holy Spirit will speak to you and he'll be teaching you and guiding and directing you, you know, but you first got to get that word in you. That word is alive. Amen. That word is, is seed, you know, incorruptible seed. And when we plant it in the soil of our mind and our heart, man, it produces it mm -hmm. grows. Amen. So, you know, just a thing here, you know, that's why sometimes it's easy for us to meditate on the negative, you know, like say, if you have an argument with your spouse, then you go to work and you're thinking about that argument all day long, you're meditating on that. Or like Dale was saying, if you got a bill and you're thinking, oh my gosh, okay, how am I going to pay this bill? You know, how am I going to work this out? You know, blah, blah, blah. I got to work X amount of hours. Maybe I can borrow it from this person. It's because you're familiar with that. You have knowledge of that. Amen. But the same thing is true with the word. As you get familiar with the word, as you get the word in you, you just got to get it in you. Sometimes you just got to 
sit and take 30 minutes and just say, hey, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to listen to an audio Bible. I, I'm, I'm getting some word in me today. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You know, and as you get it in you, then you get familiar with it and then you'll find that it'll just start coming out of you. It'll just be easy for you to begin to meditate on it because you're familiar with it, because you know it, because it's in you. Mm -hmm. Amen. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it takes time, though. It's a process. All of this is a process. So don't don't <clears throat> get offended or anything if you're not doing this already. Don't get offended. Praise God that you're learning this now. I don't care how old, old you are. You still can start now and God will meet you where you at. So just because you're not doing it, start today. Okay. Start today. It will change your life. I don't care who you are. It, but you got to get this knowledge rightly divided, understood in context. And there's a lot of ways that you can get it. You know, so stop with the excuses. It's up to you. You got to put, it's going to take time and effort. So, so start wherever 10 minutes, 30 minutes a day. It's going to take time and effort because this is a process. You're not going to wake up tomorrow in your mind and have all this knowledge in you. But it's important to get it in you because if it's not in you, it can't come out of you. Okay, go ahead. Well, and then too, I mean... All of your walk with God, you're going to be learning. You know, it's, it's a constant. We never, a nobody ever knows everything. Yeah. We're always going to be learning until we go to be with Jesus. And then when we go home to be with him, we're still going to be, we're still going to be gaining information. Amen. We're going to be gathering knowledge and stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's. We're you're all we're always going to be learning every I don't care if we've been doing this 50 years. We're all going to continue to be learning. Amen. It's, it's a process, you know, and it's kind of like what we were talking about. Well, um, you know, like Dale was saying, if you can worry, because you know, a lot of people will be like, well, I have to work. I have kids. I have stuff I have to do. I can't just sit around and meditate on the word or read the Bible, have the word in front of me literally all day, day and night. Of course you can't. But like he was saying, if you can worry and and work at the same time then you can meditate on the same word of thing, God same principle and, and work at the same time you know just you know think about a scripture you know think about something that you've read you know think about um a message that you've heard you know and meditate on that word and ask the holy spirit okay holy spirit you know what is it that you want to tell me from this you know what is it that you want me to see from this like i said sometimes when you're reading through the word sometimes a, a scripture will just just jump out at you the holy spirit will quick quicken that scripture to you it's because he wants to tell you something in that mm -hmm. so when that happens stop take time write that down you know and then ponder it meditate on it if you have a reference bible maybe look up reference scriptures for that you know one particular scripture and just see what the holy spirit unfolds and what he's trying to tell you you know and just think about it ponder it meditate on it you know because there's there's something in there that the holy spirit is trying to get to you but once you begin to do this a little bit at a time it just becomes a habit and it becomes easier and easier yeah 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 uh, to the degree that you make yourself available the holy spirit's always talking to you but sometimes we're on a different frequency because we're stressed out and worrying, meditating on the wrong thing. How are we going to pay this bill? You know what I mean? But as soon as you tune in and you don't need but one scripture, you know what I mean? You don't need to hold, know the whole Bible. And as you meditate in the word, you're sensitizing your spirit. Now you can hear the Holy Spirit speak to you and give you insight and give you uh, steps to what to do. But when you're stressed out, then your mind is, the spirit is desensitized and cluttered. And even though it's trying to speak to you and direct you, you can't hear it because your spirit is weak and your flesh is strong and your mind is cluttered. So there's so many advantages that we can word it to where this is. That's why God talks about this so much in so many areas, because this is how he made our bodies. This is how life works. This is how God designed our bodies to work, spirit, soul, and body, okay? And meditation is a part of that soulish realm. Remember, your soulish realm, to get everything from the spiritual realm over here in the physical realm, it's got to come through your soul. So this soulish part is where your meditation is, okay? So that's why this is important. It's the gateway, as you always say, to receiving manifestations. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I have here uh, kind of, 
you know, going back to what I was saying earlier, the reason many people find it difficult to meditate on the word day and night is because they don't have any word in them. You can't meditate on something if you've never read it. You first have to gather knowledge or read the scriptures and know what the Bible says in order to meditate on it. Amen. So, you know, just like I said, a lot, some different ways you can do that. One way that I get do that all the time, like when I'm at work, I have like little, you know, wireless ear pods that I'll put in and I'll just go to YouTube and I'll just, you know, look up, you know, you know, audio Bible, NIV, book of Psalms or, you know, Genesis or, you know, whatever, you know, just go and find an audio Bible and look at it. And I mean, and Put it on and listen to it, you know, while you're at work or while you're driving or, you know, whatever, you know, um, that's a great way just to get the word in you. Amen. And then just sitting down sometimes, turning off the TV, getting quiet, opening up the Bible and just reading the word of God. Amen. There's so much benefit that comes from that, but you got to get it in you in order for you to be able to meditate on it. Amen. And then, yeah. like I was saying, we'll never get past reading the word and learning about the word. I mean, there's scriptures that I've read a hundred times, but that hundred and one time, the Holy Spirit will reveal something new to me, something deeper to me. So that it's just layer upon layer, revelation upon revelation. You never know everything that there is to know, you know, and, and the more you learn, you'll find the more you learn. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and so it's just it's a, just a continuing cycle of, of gaining knowledge and revelation and then wisdom and applic and applying that. But I mean, it's that's how we make our way prosperous. That's how we make our way successful in life. Amen. Exactly. That's um, you got to get the knowledge before you can <laughs> understand it. Knowledge comes first. You got to have the knowledge before you get a revelation knowledge. You got to have head knowledge before you get revelation knowledge. Okay, so that's the beginning, you know, before you can meditate, you know. And if you don't have any, if you're just starting and don't have any uh, scriptures in your mind, pick one before you leave out in the morning and just use that one to meditate all day. God will work with you with that. Or like Lena does, she has, she does uh, cards. Index cards. Index cards and take a stick them in her back pocket and take them to work. You know, you got to start somewhere. You know, and this is this is how you make your way prosperous. Okay, either you believe the Bible or you don't. But the Bible, this is the inspired word of God, where He gives us direction on how we, our part, excuse me, our part is to make our way prosperous. Mm -hmm. So, if it's something that you're believing God for, for example, you know, maybe it's a healing script. Maybe you're believing God for healing. You know, do a Google search, get you some healing scriptures together, and then maybe write a couple down on some index cards or even just one write it down on index card put it in your pocket and when you're at work you know and out and about it at the grocery store sitting in the driveway you know i mean the driveway in the drive through getting you something to eat at lunch or whatever while you're sitting there just flip, pull that card out real quick and look at it read it you know what i'm saying while you're there at work doing whatever you know you have a couple of minutes a couple of seconds just pull that card out real quick read it you know when you go to the bathroom pull that card out real quick read it you would be surprised when you have that work Word there ready readily available which is why I like using index cards you will keep it literally in the forefront of your mind all day because when you get a second you can just pop it out 30 seconds read it okay thank you God and mm -hmm. now it's in the forefront of your mind and that's just going and going and going then the Holy Spirit's gonna start speaking to you through that so I mean something as simple as that you know if you're believing for prosperity Google search prosperity scriptures write your one or two down on some index cards bam and put them in your pocket amen and while you're out and about like I said at the drive-thru at lunch in the bathroom whatever you got a couple seconds bam pull it out okay okay you know that's one way or like I said the audio Bible, you know, uh, listen to that, you know, while you're out and about doing what you're doing instead of listening to your music that we all enjoy so much, you know, listen to the audio Bible for a little bit while you're driving to work, when you're coming home from work, you know, just, those are just some of the little things you can do to get more word in your life. And you'll be surprised what a difference little stuff like that makes. It adds up over time. It really does. Yeah, and see, you, you, um, I know some of y'all thinking, some of y'all like, well, I ain't got time to do all that. You know what I mean? I got to do this, I got to do that. I ain't got time. That's too much. That's too much. Okay, stay the same then. You know what I mean? I say this with love because 
People love making excuses because they don't want to take the responsibility, but they want to first thing they do is blame God or even blame the devil instead of taking responsibility. God has put out simply in his word the responsibility, your part, and your part ain't even making it happen. He's already done that. The hardest part is done. Your part is just to get it in you and then speak it out of you. And believe it, you know, which is not hard. It's just take a, a little time per day. But if you know if you think this is hard and it's too much, then hey, that's just the way you, you you're gonna but stay like the I same. Said, as you implement some of those little things, like I said, get yeah. you whatever it is you're believing God for. You know, just get you one. I'm too hard, ain't I? I'm sorry, y'all. I love y'all, man. Just write one but... or two scriptures, you know. And, you know, like I said, just have them there, you know, on your index cards, pull them out, read them. Like I said, maybe listen to the Bible on the way to work, you know, or while you're at lunch. And you will be surprised. That little bit, it adds up, and that'll help you get that word in you. Amen. Yeah. Now, yeah. hey, everybody. We're going to finish this discussion in a second video. I just want to say thanks for watching, and as always, continued blessings.